What's going on people? We welcome to the Ghana Afem. It is time for evolution. So in today's video I'm gonna be showing you guys a method I use for digital painting. And so for this I'm going to uh, show this is going to be done in Photoshop. And for, first of all, for the layers you wanna have these th pretty much these three sections, you know. You want to have a uh, a, a gray background uh, so that it doesn't so that uh, when you're applying for example if you have a a black color on a figure or a white color you want to be able to tell the difference between the white color and the background which is why this this here is on cause this part of his pants the color is white and so if I had a uh, a white background it would be kind of difficult to tell the difference and so you want to have a different uh, color a different color background and usually the best one to go for is gray it's a neutral color and so yeah go for gray so I have a gray background oh uh, I have the line work this line work so you want to have your line work done and these are my flats and this is the uh, correction selection you know so if I wanted to select the entire figure I would come here at the correction selection now then how do how do you make this uh, how do you make this base layer how do you make this base layer uh, which I'll be showing you so I'm just gonna make this layer invisible just pretend this is not here so we're going to layer 5 selection So layer five. So this 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 has now become selection, uh, and I'm gonna just gonna show you guys how I made this. So what you wanna do is go to, uh, go to your magic wand tool. So yeah, so I'm at my magic wand tool. I went to the line layer. The line layer is right here. So I put uh, you know, magic wand and also you want to make sure you c even uh, get into like the little crevices like right here. I'm selecting everything so I can select the entire uh, the entire figure. When I select the after I select the entire figure, I'm going to go to to layer and then I'm going to excuse me, I'm going to go to select and then I'm going to go to inverse. So I'm going to inverse that, and while I inverse that, make sure you don't uh, you don't paste your gray on the line art. So make sure your selection is selected, and then matter of fact, let's turn let's turn these flats invisible. I will get into that later. But let's let's do that. Your gray, and use the paint bucket tool. And you can see, you know, this part was not selected here carefully. So you know, you want to make sure that uh, uh, these, uh, what, what you're coloring is, uh, you know, you want to make sure uh, this is selected. You know, and, like any part, every part is selected. But this is pretty much an example. Um, I already have this already on on my uh, correction selection so I'm just gonna delete this I'm just showing you guys how to get to this and the reason why I have this is just because uh, it's just to reference in case I want to select the entire character again so in case I want to select the entire character again I go to my layer you know and now I, I right click and then I select select pixels you know select pixels and then when you select select pixels you can it grabs automatically grabs the entire figure you know so this is a good way to uh to create a reference a reference point to capture the entire figure so i have this now your flats your flats are pretty much you know the flat colors the base colors the the colors that have no shadows or lights not yet but your base colors and so for my flats i have them in, within 
different layers. Uh, for my flat cards, there are different layers. So for, for orange, I have, or for red, I have one layer. For yellow, I have all in one layer. For white, I have all in one layer. And these are all of the uh, different uh, color layers. Uh, even, even for the brown uh, section of this uh, dream catcher, it has a brown layer so every part or little part has a layer okay and so it's all under a folder and I don't like to merge my folders or I don't like to merge my layers because I, later on I, maybe I want to change some of the colors if something doesn't work out okay so this this is how my flats work and how do you make something like this uh, you go to your folders down here right here and you can click group one and when you click group one you can name your your folder and then when you name your folder you can uh, select like down here right down here at this row at the end uh, you can see uh, create a new layer and what you can, and this layer for example could be first first off first let's let me turn this flats invisible so that you know what I'm talking about so yeah this could so that this layer could be red the next layer could be yellow the next layer could be orange whatever uh, character that you want just make sure it's just in different layers okay so for example um, I'm going to make the uh, pants uh, blue okay let's just make the, the pants causes pants blue okay so I'll, I will name this layer blue then I would use my magic wand tool right here and then and then first off first select your line art uh, select select where you want to paste paste that color and then don't don't paste it on your line art so right now I'm selecting blue you don't want to place it on the line art you want to make sure it's paced on your flats so I'm selecting blue and now we have the blue okay so we have the blue and you know that's pretty much how these flats work they're just it's just simple you know simple so that's pretty much how the flats work and now I'm going to just delete this new one and stick with my old flats all right, so time for the shades. So for the shades, you're gonna want to have them above, or the, the shadows, or so, whatever you wanna call them. You wanna have them above your flats, so create a new layer, and call them sh shades, or shadows. All right, and so after you've you've created this um you're going to want to come to your layer modes and the layer mode that you want to select is difference and difference is located down here okay and the color that you want to shade with is uh, a, a light a light uh, a gray but leaning more towards the yellow so for example a gray here and then we're gonna add a little bit of yellow to it you know so it's gonna be gray and we're gonna move this picker a little bit slightly towards the yellow so it's gonna be a mixture of gray and gray gray like 80 percent gray and a tiny bit of yellow okay so we're gonna hit okay all right And so, all right, so now I'm going to shade it. So I'm gonna to go to correction selection, right click and then select pixel so that my shading doesn't go outside the, the border or outside the lines. So it's gonna be kept inside. And so I'm gonna make sure I select my shades, the shades layer. And then while I have the shades layer selected, I'm going to uh, uh, apply the shades. You know and then you know I'm going to show you guys when it's when it's finished 
in, in its in, entirety and there's a lot to shadowing so to simply explain it is that wherever you find a bump in a muscle within the middle of that bump is going to be the lightest and outside of that bump is going to be where you uh, apply your shadows again there's more to shadowing and so this is what it looks like when the shadows are applied and so i changed my shades layer into shadows to make it easier for you to understand and the cool thing about shading with this with the difference uh layer mode with the shadows is that um every color every color if you zoom in is going to be a, a, a different tint to it you know so this brown right here is a uh, kind of a, there's a, a little bit of a greenish tint of uh, this blue right here is i mean yeah this red right here has a, a bit of a bluish tint to it so your sh your shades are going to react differently to the different colors that are on your layers and it's pretty cool to have different uh, tinted shadows for for different for different colors you know and so the this this is the uh this is the this is the, the, the shadows and so i don't like the way the yellow looks and so this is where this is where you uh, we're creating different lay different layers for your colors this is when it, it, it goes to a benefit to you right because now you can change so let's say you don't like the the way the shade the this this shade is interacting with this yellow right here you can go to flats so yeah let's go to flats okay and we have my yellow so this is this is my yellow right so i'm going to uh right click this layer right here where, the, where the, the blank spots are at, where the color is at, this layer. And I'm just gonna uh, right click and do select pixels. Okay, so I selected my pixels. Now, what I'm gonna do now is go to image, adjustments, and then uh, hue and saturation. Okay, hue and saturation, we're gonna do that. So when we are at, we are at hue and saturation now. Right, so now we're gonna just change up the the this yellow, this plain yellow, because I don't like the way it's interacting with my shadows. Right, so I'm going to uh, kind of yeah, ch again change up the hue a little bit. I'm it's starting to become cool, some something that I enjoy, because uh, now you you can start to see if you zoom in. You can start to see it interacting with the uh, with the with the shadow here. Okay, so you, you can you can you can pretty much play around with this. You know, you can pretty much change the colors to however you wish. But I prefer for this design to be the way to be yellow like this. So now that I have changed it. Now let's just deselect so that you can clearly see. Now you can see how this shadow is now interacting with the yellow that I changed on my flat layer. You know, now it looks to, to pop out more compared to uh, the, the previous uh, the previous flat yellow. So this is why I like this method, the difference, because it, it, it includes uh, different tints you know to your shadows to for different uh for different areas and so before we move on to applying our lines i'm going to do something cool to the line art layer so what i'm going to do is have when once you have your line art uh layer selected i'm going to right click the layer and yeah right click the layer with the, the section where the words are at Right click that, not the section with the picture, but the section with the word where the words are at. So yeah, right right click that, duplicate layer, hit, hit OK, and now I have success, successfully duplicated my line art. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is go into filter and then blur, then Gaussian blur. Okay, so we're now we're gonna hit OK. So now we have blur and Gaussian blur, and now we hit OK. You can adjust the, the radius, I like this, so we're just gonna hit OK um and so what it, what this is gonna do is give this this thing a, a glow a, a kind of 
anime glow, if you will. You know, so what we're gonna do now is lower the opacity, lower the opacity for the line art, like a, like around you know 70, 70 ish or so for that, and then we're gonna also decrease the line art to around you know 80, 80 the, that percentage, 80 or four, to to 40 or something that percentage range and so you know you can you can really play around with this it is this is extra and this is not required but you can really play around with this you know you can keep, keep you can keep the line word at, at around 80 or you can keep the um, the, the the line art at 72 or you could you know change it up to, to, to 50 and change that up like lower the opacity a little bit but again for for your original but again, you know, play around with this. This is up to you. Um, you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to adjusting this. But this gives this a, a, a kind of uh, uh, a glow to it. It gives your, your, your artwork a glow. All right, so now we're going to be applying our lights. So for our lights, what we're going to do is create a new layer. All right, so we're gonna name this layer lights. And on our light layer, we're going to be using a layer blending mode called overlay. Okay, so overlay. So with this uh, layer blending mode called overlay, uh, we're also going to include effects on this layer. So you come down here and you go to FX. This this it has a lowercase F and a lowercase F. So it's, 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 if you pronounce it, it sounds like FX, F, FX. Anyway, anyway, uh, what you want to do is you want to come here to Inner Glow, okay? And when you come here to Inner Glow, uh, set the opacity to 32. Your blend mode, make sure it's hard light and use a an orange color. And you know, if you want to experiment, with your lighting, you can come here and do your uh, do your thing, but we're just gonna stick with we're just gonna stick with this. And so, if you're using a tablet, let's make a new brush. And so, this brush we will be using for the lighting. Uh, we could also use this brush for the shadows too. This also helps for the shadows. You can use this brush for the shadows as well. And so, to make this new brush. We're gonna come here to these three lines of the hamburger looking icon. And then we're gonna do uh, select new brush preset. Okay, select the new brush preset. And then we'll just hit, actually we'll just name it new. Okay, and it's, this is gonna be a soft brush as well. So new, so okay, so we have the new, right? And so if you come right here to this folder with a brush symbol on it, uh, you want to make sure your uh, your settings look like this, okay? So shape dynamic, shape dynamics. Uh, this minimum di diameter should be around a 50 percent, and and that's around the middle. Uh, just make your 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 settings look like like this, and also for transfer, just turn on transfer. I don't think you don't have to do much editing by default, and just turn on. You're smooth. So turn on transfer, turn on your smooth shape dynamics. The only thing you're gonna be uh, editing is the, the 50%, all right? And so we are going to uh, start to color the lights now, okay? So I, I'm gonna show you uh, certain things. So first, this is what the, if I didn't make the new brush with, with the normal brush, this is what this would look like. You know, you see this this kind of streakiness. It doesn't it doesn't blend well uh, with the uh, with the drawing. So with the new brush uh, settings, what I'm gonna, that I'm going to show you. So this this is a new brush that we created together. All right. So now I'm going to uh, draw, you, and you can see now you can see now it's starting to blend to blend well. Okay. And so this is gonna take some anatomy, but uh, some anatomy understanding to know where to, where the light 
but for the simple version of it, like I said before, uh, where the bump is, is where it's going to be the lightest, and the surrounding areas are going to be where the shadow is, and, and it also depends on the lighting. But uh, generally, and, and to simplify it, where the bump is, is where you're going to uh, have the light or the tip, okay? So, so right now, for example, uh, this the, the biceps, right? So you can see how I have the shadows around the bicep, and in the middle, it starts to gradually get towards the lightest, which is at the middle, you know. But it's gonna take some some understanding of anatomy just to to understand the shapes. So like when you understand all the bumps on the anatomy figure, on the anatomical figure, then you can, uh, you know, pinpoint. It, it'll help you easily pinpoint the shadows when you know the anatomy. Okay. So anyway, anyway, this is what um, the lighting is going to look like. All right. So this is my lights layer, and so the only thing that changes that lights now is in all caps. And so this is my lights layer. Use this is the shadow layer. I'm just gonna remove them both so that you can see. So this, it, this is my flats. Okay. These are my shadows. Okay, and these are my lights. Okay, and so if we wanted to, we could just end this tutorial right here, but we're going to add some extra elements to this. And so we're going to be adding a extra folder uh, above all these layers, and we're just going to call it extras. So within the extras folder, you want to make two new layers. One is going to be called smoke. The other is going to be called lightning. And so for the smoke, we're going to be using the Inventant uh, Concept Art Brush Pack. You can find this online and it comes with a bunch of cool textures for for nature art for such as smoke water mist rocks etc this is a cool brush back uh, clouds etc uh, so right now we're just gonna be using the smoke we're gonna be going to the smoke se section of this brush pack and we're just because this is sage right here and since this is sage we're ha uh, and it's burning, we're just going to add it, uh, add a little uh, burn smoke coming out from the sage that is burning. Okay. All right. So, so that that's pretty much it for that. And so for the lightning uh, area, we're going to be um, making this an. A, a, adding an effects to it fx and so the uh, fx is going to be auto glow auto glow is going to be a blue color and we're going to set the blending mode to screen and then that's it your base color is going to be white and when you're drawing the outside glow is going to be blue okay so it's going to look like this okay and anything you draw will look like this so this is going to be my electricity however i want to lower the opacity of that Oh, I mean, I want to lower my brush size, okay? And electricity tends to go in this kind of uh, angle-based direction. So, I want to I want to actually lower my opacity for that. So, it also, if you don't see it, if you don't see the glow here, uh, it could be that if you come here and you have this you right click right click your you know your outer glow and effects and if you have hide layer hide uh, hide effects hide all effects uh, turned on you, you want to make sure that's turned uh, off so turn it turn turn it uh, turn it off and now we have the electricity here so what what this is going to look like we're going to first lower the opacity to six, okay? 
and the electricity is going to be coming from the pads beneath Kyle's feet. You know, animals animals like this with this kind of feet, they tend to run very fast and they don't really need shoes. Shoes is not really necessary because the pads serve as a shock absor absorption for the bones. So anyway, we are going to be drawing the electricity, which is going to look like this, okay? And so now we're going to be adding a motion blur to cause his leg because it's moving fast with the uh, electricity that's been done here. And so what we're going to do right here, I have another layer, a transparent background. Um, these are, this is just one whole flat layer of all the colors and then shades here into one and the background is flat. So what I'm going to do here is just... Uh, Matter of fact, what I'm going to do is actually right click this photo here. Or no, no, I'm going to right click where the where my wording is. My and then I'm going to come here to duplicate my layer. Duplicate layer. Um then I'm going to go to right here it says destination. My destination will be drawing method 1.psd. Okay, and it now is going to be transferred as layer 5. We're going to name that as We're going to name that as motion blur. So right now Okay Motion and So we're going to do that and so right here we're going to come here to filter filter and then filter blur motion blur and now your motion blur is going to be you want to adjust it you know looking like this and maybe adjust yeah adjust adjust the distance as well to have that illusion of uh, that, uh, illusion of speed right here that it's kicking so fast and also now you, you can see how it's how it's blurry here so and also at the same time the lightning is not um it's not over it so you want to make sure the lightning the lightning layer is over this leg here so that it can uh you know look cool so so right here the motion blur uh, we're going to we only want the leg to blur and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to use our eraser tool to erase the uh, the parts that we don't want blurred okay so my eraser tool is right here okay and you can use your soft brush if you wish or you can use a, um, a hard brush but you know use a soft brush you know right here where the leg is at you know, use your soft eraser right here so that it has a seamless transition, you know? And so right right now, um, I'm just going, going over this. And yeah, I'm using the, the soft brush. And since I'm using the soft brush, I'm just gonna be like, gonna be going over some of these, uh, these areas like two or three times. To like just to get rid of the uh, the blur, the parts that I don't want blurred. And so yeah, the only part that is blurred is the leg here. So you can see the blur effect is being a put into place with the leg here. If you want to blur it even more, you can, you know, blur it even more. Go to um, blur, uh, motion blur. Just blur it even more, if if that's what you want. Uh, that's what you want. But uh, you know, this is this is fine. But yeah, that will be the video. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe.
and peace.